This is Gary Shaw from Bray Wanders, and you're watching Irish Footy Vlogs. Please subscribe to the channel. Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to a first division promotion final preview. We've got Bray Wanders taking on UCD at Daily Mount Park Friday evening, the exact same night as the final fixtures are for the the finale, the Premier Division, which is disappointing. I know we've spoken about it before, Keno, but a big opportunity missed here. The likes of yourself, myself, would have been going to this, to be fair, um, had it been on a Saturday or Sunday, etc. But uh, look, independent from that, it's a massive game for both sides. Who's favourites here, though? Uh, there's no one really favourite. No. UCD will have to be the favourites. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's... Like I said, it's a shame we can't go and see it, but... To be honest, there's that much action going on in the Premier Division on Friday night that you probably won't even know the score. Well, my phone is on airplane mode and anyway, so we will not know the score. You won't be saying anything. But, <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be a... It's anyone's game, you know? And the, arguably, I think it, this is an awful lot bigger for Bray in terms of the pressure that Gary has been under and the pressure that Bray players and you know, everyone connected with the club is under. Uh, if they get this, a decent playoff run, I still think they might be a little bit unhappy with the season, but I might just dent it a little bit and put it, put it in our little memory a little bit in terms of, you know, if we can get out of this, if we can beat Galway and beat UCD and then see what happens against Waterford or yeah. Finn Harps in a one-off game, you know. And it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think it's definitely going to be cagey. I think, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't know getting away from how Bray play. I think two totally opposites in terms of Bray and UCD in terms of football and wise. Uh, I fancy UCD to keep the ball and play them, play nice little passes in between around the corner type passes and just be literally pass the ball around like a pinball machine at times. But then again, I fancy Bray to slow everything down. Uh, and try and get up to Gary with a flick on, you know, and that's the way they have been. I, I think Bray have the players if they actually want to get the ball down and play. They, they've, there's no reason why they can't, but I don't see them doing it, especially in this game. Uh, I'm disappointed as well of all places that the game is in Daly Mount Park. I have uh, like you have Richmond Park there, which I'm not not just because I'm, you know, a Pats fan, but I think Richmond is an awful lot. It's an awful lot better for an occasion than Daily Mount at this minute in time. Where in terms of, you know, you have to stand behind the goal, you have, you have stand, you have the shed end, you have the main stand, and they come back to stand on. So you know, it's more spread out. Where you know they're going to Daily Mount, which that's a bit probably, tighter. They are trying to get some form of atmosphere. Yeah, possibly. and the, you know the pitch isn't probably as good. You know, in terms of you know playing on it and the bubbles running around the goal mounts and stuff like that. So. Uh, it's just a bit of a strange with the seeing in daily amount of our places, but look, that's where it is. I'm not putting bowers down at all. I'm not putting anyone down by saying that. I think a few people probably would have predicted it to be in Richmond more than anything. But look, it's not. We have to move on with it. But it's going to be total opposites, like I says, in terms of Bray and UCD and the way they play. So it's just who can come out on top, who can stop them. Look, I don't want to call this. I really don't. Uh, could go all the way, Kino. This one, one off, um, it could very easily go all the way. UCD have a have a lot of creativity and a lot of players that are good in the eye. So have Bray, but I just think UCD get more football and Brian out of players and more you know technical ability than Bray do out of their group of players, but. I'm not putting Bray down. They're in the final here. It, it's a, it's a one-off game, and you know anything can happen. You've seen it. I think I, I, I wrote Bray off completely after the Galway game, and I says they go down to Galway and they probably get beaten two or three nil because they, they were, they were very poor in the home game, and you know they pull results out when they're not supposed to. So I think going in as slight underdogs probably just them a little bit of a favour here. Uh, like I said, I don't want to call it. Uh, 
come back to me for anything. I'll move on to the sheet for now, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the exact same. I'm kind of trying to think as you're talking mm. as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, Bray done very well, Oshin, to get the win over mm. Galway for two legs. And I think yeah. they showed their uh, togetherness and their doggedness in those games. But Galway did fail to break them down. UCD have a few more strings in that bow, you know what I mean, uh, with the players mm. they have. Obviously, Colin Williams is vital to their, their goals, and Liam Kerrigan's an exceptional player. Keeney is a good player as well. They're their three main players when you talk about yeah. going forward, basically. Yeah, um, Ray, though, as Keane says, they do have some uh, very good footballers. Uh, Connor Clifford has Connor played Clifford, well for them in the first division this season. He can play yeah. football, and we all know about Brandon Cavan as well. He was the yeah. match winner, really, against Galway with yeah. superb, yeah. superb yeah. goal there as well. So, it is a bit of a contrast of styles because I do think Cronin will set up to try and annoy UCD yeah. and see how that tests yeah. UCD out. But also at the same time, if Bray are to play like that and hit UCD on the counter, they wouldn't be as solid as, say, Galway are defensively. Um, it's a tough one to judge this, isn't it? Yeah, it is a tough one. Um, about a fortune of buying five-year-old passes for the for the semi-finals. Uh, I watched the first half of the treaty in the UCD match uh, and then I went and paid for a second half then in the uh the Bray and Galway match in the first leg and then I done the same then the second half but I watched the Bray and Galway match first before I watched the uh UCD match because 3 3 had got two goals and you know I was thinking it could be a bit interesting so um but yeah no it has to be credit for credit to you if I played a Bray like no one uh, like even myself I was writing them off didn't see them beating Galway to be honest Galway were hyped up you know didn't like Bray finish on like something like 39 points and Galway were like miles ahead and they did something like 50 or 51 or oh, it uh, 14 points ahead of them, for example. Yeah, yeah. 40, yeah. So they are like so just a bit mad, like um, but uh, as you know from the playoffs, anything can happen, you know. Uh as we've seen last year, Longford beat themselves and so on. I think uh Bray will uh frust- frustrate Galway, um like they did or frustrate it, frustrate UCD like they did against Galway. Um and they'll sit in, you know, and possibly might catch UCD on the break. Um or with UCD, you know, as you mentioned already, they have, you know, Liam Kerrigan and, and, and Colin Whelan and so on, you know, they'll be, you know, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be going all out for it, I think. Um, UCD, you know, they've, I think, I, I would tip UC, UCD. Um, maybe not normal time, maybe extra time. I could see it maybe one all after after normal time, uh, go on the break from, from Bray and then possibly, uh, you know, Maybe a winner from Colin Whelan, maybe an extra time. Um, yeah, that's what that's the prediction I would go with. Um, be a tough old match. Um, down the venue, yeah, it's a bit, a bit strange having it in the element. I agree with that there, considering you only have the, you know, the two stands or whatever it is at the minute. Um, and yeah, they could they could possibly, you know, obviously I was in Richmond last year, so maybe they were you know, just thinking of a different you know, a change or whatever. Um, well, that was the, the match against Shells. But yeah, no, it's... It's set up, it's a bit shame, shame of the time, you know, on Friday night, but um, that's the FAI for you, you know. So, yeah, no, I'll go for a 2-1 UCD. Here's one for you, Keno, actually. Who do you think is more likely to um, actually get promotion from both teams? Who would you worry, be worried more about if you were Waterford or Finn Harps, Bray or UCD? I probably would have been Galway, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't think Bray or UCD would be whoever finishes ninth. Look, it can change on the day. I do think, I, I would like to say, I don't think it's very fair that Galway are in the same one as Bray, for example, after being so many, I don't mean the points top, but in second in the position. I think the top two should go up and the, top two, the bottom two should go down. And the eighth place in the Premier Division plays the third place between, you know, the, th- the third spot. Whoever, yeah, system, yeah. for example, let's say you know we right. have you have two semi-finals in the fourth division. Yeah. Mental, yeah. That's that's what I would I would rather two semi-finals in the fourth division in terms of third, fourth, fifth, and sixth mm. play each other to get whoever finishes in eighth Third. in the Premier Division. Yeah. It's me- that's mental, like because considering like the past few years, you had to play six matches, you know, to actually. Or six matches to get actually up, like, and there's no guarantee you're going to get promoted. Like, that's, oh, a oh, that's exactly it. So, we think, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd like this year. See, yeah, I'd like to see going forward that they have the eight, whoever finishes eight in the Premier Division has to play the winners of Tour Four yeah. in the playoffs. And I, I just think it opens it up a little bit then, and you know, it gives, it gives them more of a chance and it gives more yeah, of a like, cause Galway knew they were second probably since July. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it, it, 
they knew they were never really going to catch shells and all of a sudden then they find themselves getting beaten by Bray, you know, and I'm not this, I'm not putting Bray down here, you know, I don't want people to think that Bray was a better team on the day and won the game for them square, but I just think if they were well, if they team were, Bray were in that position last year as well, so they'll probably agree with you because they finished yeah. second behind Florida and it was very tight margins. Yeah, that's it, and I just think they should, uh, you know, force the second half to go up and toward toward the fixes as a little playoff between each other. But look, it's one of them is gonna get through. Whether they go and be Harps or whether they go and be uh Waterford, one or the other is another thing, that's for another day. But it's all about getting there. And look, once you're there, you give yourself a fighting chance and you know I'm gonna go for Bray here. Keith Ryan's not gonna like that, I tell you, because I, I have a suspicion for Bray as well. And every time me and Keno go for Bray, it's UCD. What did you say, Hoshin? Or the opposite team, sorry. Yeah, I go for UCD to one, two, one on extra time. Okay. Right. One all after one all and then win the next time. Yeah. So but guys, we leave it there. Let us know what you think in the comments. Who's going to win this tie? Um, are you going to the game? And subscribe to the channel, uh, hit your bell notification button and like the video. Thanks very much. Thank you. So, Thank <laughs> you.